take us through the standard model to the questions of cosmic molasses, Higgs, and uh, oh my gosh! Some of the <laughs> I mean, there's all, we haven't even talked about supersymmetry yet, right? Yeah, let me talk about that. So, as I mentioned before, we have this very powerful, very accurate, sort of embarrassingly robust uh, account of how basic interactions work the standard model, uh, that's not as beautiful as it should be. It has four different forces in it and different kinds of particles. We'd like there to be one basic force and uh, just one kind of basic stuff. Now, uh, we can construct mathematically theories that uh, put different kinds of particles on the same footing. This is called symmetry, where you can make transformations of the names of the particles, and they would obey the same equations. So if, if that's the case, uh, you say you've had a unified account. That, that's sort of, it's just a matter of a convention, how you've named things, that really electrons and quarks are the same thing at a deeper level. But, the, but symmetry and, refers to pairings of things? No, symmetry refers to the idea that uh, you can tr make tr transformations in the equations, say changing electrons into quarks and quarks into electrons. And you get different equations, of course, but they have exactly the same consequences as the equations you had before. I see. So, you so can no make matter how you arrange it, it all adds up. It, all, it all looks the same overall. So okay. the idea is, is, similar, is similar to the way we say a uh, circle or a sphere is symmetrical because you can rotate it. And although every point is in a new place, it's still the same overall shape. So it's the same idea of it applied to equations. So, uh, so these are called unified. The, these are called unified theories that put together electrons and quarks and photons and gluons, and, and we can write down very elegant uh, theories of this kind. Now, next slide. Uh, however, uh, a crucial prediction of this kind of idea, if the forces are really going to be all the same is that they have to have the same strength. At least after you peel away the complications of things like the Higgs field and look down at very short distances and high energies, uh, the different forces should have the same strength. And that now, refers to the two forces, the weak these, force. This is weak and strong. And strong force. Can and you, you can see on this uh, plot, that we make these corrections peeling away the effect of the Higgs field to see whether the basic underlying uh, forces at the shortest distances and highest energies are the same force and have the same strength, uh, we see that if we take the strong and weak interactions and make those corrections uh, to the strength, that the lines do indeed cross. So that's encouraging. But on the other hand, you might say that two straight lines do tend to meet at a point. <laughs> so it's not as impressive as it could be. And, but then and we have a third force. We can make the correction. We can also compare that, and you see, don't, almost, but not quite. They don't quite all unify. Uh, now, so, so and, and this information right here, these graphs are based on experiments we've already done. Yeah, the little circles on the left are the measurements of the strengths that we know about, and then uh, by the kind of work that I got the Nobel Prize for, you can calculate how they change as you strip away the uh, complications and go down to shorter distances. And the idea is, again, that they unify at some energy level and that all of these forces, electric, weak, right. and strong, Should come are essentially together. part of the same stuff. Right. right. They, there's, there's one underlying Ur force that sees them all the same. Would you call it Ur force? I would. <laughs> <laughs> you could come well, up with a better people, name than that. People though. sometimes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same concept as the unified field theory that people have been dreaming about for a long time. Uh, so even with the unification I talked about, there were two, still two different kinds of things. There was electrons and quarks on the one hand and photons and gluons on the other. So the remaining step is to unify those two things. And this is possible using an idea called supersymmetry. According to supersymmetry, uh, there's an extra dimension of space, which is not, however, a dimension you could move around in or fly spaceships through or anything like that. It's what's called a quantum dimension. What's happen is, what happens if you move in that dimension is that you change into a very different kind of 
particle, which would be very uncomfortable, actually. <laughs> but uh, you would change into a particle that uh, has a different character. So an electron could change into a photon-like particle, or a quark could change into a gluon-like particle. Is it that it that, changes, or that there is a pair of particles that are kind of channeling it each changes. other? No, it, it changes. It literally changes. It okay. literally changes. So the mass changes. A few properties stay the same, but so we can tell that they're related, but uh, the mass changes and, and the spin changes. So uh, to implement, so that, and that would complete the unification. But to do that, we have to introduce new particles. When we introduce new particles, then there is different complications to strip away, so we have to uh, redo that calculation I showed you. <laughs> <laughs> Susie is supersymmetry. Keep going. <laughs> and you see, if you do it with supersymmetry, ah, look at that. Now it really comes together. So that's why I love Susie. <laughs> and uh, so far, I haven't even talked about gravity, but we can bring that in too. And gravity <laughs> starts out much weaker than the other forces, but if you go down to these same distances, it turns out that it too unifies.